After the death of King Von, Quando Rondo and his entourage seemed marked for death. Amid rumours of a million dollar bounty on his head, he would need to move safe. But even before the feud with King Von, Lil Durk and his OTF collective, Quando Rondo had other people that would have wanted to see him dead too. A longtime member of Savannah Georgia's rolling 60s Crips, with locals set only the mob having deep ties to the streets and years of history catching serious charges, there was numerous groups and gangs from his native city that might have had it out for him. One such example was the crew known as SAK or the Section 8 kids, who were still hating on Quando Rondo and his crew. Only the mob, OTM, sometimes referred to as JOG or Jump Out Gang or 1027, Quando's crew were an enormous target for numerous people. And just like Lil Durk from Chicago, Quando Rondo's ops from Savannah would use music as an attempt to get back at them. For example, in April 2022, SAK Gutter drops the song Drill Time, along with a music video that started out with him crossing out 1027 and Jump Out Gang tags on a wall. And he would rap F1027 in this song. So at this point, Quando and his team have the most dangerous gang in Chicago trying to kill him, as well as numerous ops in his own native city of Savannah also looking to take his life. But Quando didn't seem bothered. After the release of Lil Tim and his new mixtape Still Taking Risks, it appeared that Quando and Tim had no fear about being outside or speaking their minds. In April, Quando runs would be broadcasting his daily activities, sliding openly through the streets of Savannah, accompanied by his mother and $50,000 in cash. He would be mobbing with his local friends like Phoenix and Big Tim, seemingly with an army of people watching his back throughout the area. Yeah, why around thugging with Mon Dukes today? 50 on me! Hey, y'all boys, I'm about to go in the stove, be on the lookout. Alright. Okay, Troy. Going on. Why around with my dudes stuck in the day? Why? My dudes, I got my little all around and sh. Hey, Phoenix, watch my car, cuz. Yeah, yeah, I'll watch. What's Marvin love, bro? <laughs> Going on. I did, uh. Boy, you messed my auntie number up yesterday, too, now. She hit for my birthday, she played 20, thought she played 25 tickets. They're really supposed to be 150, right? Yeah, you messed my auntie number. Mrs. Birthday. Yeah, this big little Tim. Thanks. In this live, Quando is behaving like he truly runs the city even proceeding to smoke a cigarette on live inside of the convenience store. At one point, Quando actually starts winning at a game, even calling up Lil Tim in the store, saying that he's up big money. Call Lil Tim, I need some. <laughs> Call Lil Tim. Call Lil Tim, big play. Big play. Call Lil Tim. Call Lil Tim, we up. Call Lil Tim. Woo! Right day. Right day. Call Lil Tim. <laughs> Why you ain't calling him yet? No, you not. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm in that hitting, baby. Check me out. Uh huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Big play, what is doing? What I hit for? Man, 30,000. Speaking of to existence. Okay. Woo! <laughs> No two. No two. Well, that's the first time. I no two. Stop playing, now. Stop playing, now. I don't play no games. Get that ready, nanny. Get that ready. Nanny. Come on, now. Joanna. I ain't. I ain't been in here five minutes and I done hit that. Uh, Joanna. Hold on, so this, they gonna uh, give you this again? Watch out! Don't touch Ow. nothing. You touch something, you gonna pay for it. I ain't no money and ain't no pressure on my money. But you, but you still owe me that. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm gonna scam this man. How, how you gonna scan it? Do something to it. No. <laughs> All right. How much that is? Three hundred and thirty dollars. See, money. You hit my birthday for three hundred and thirty dollars. It's interesting because you can actually really see the close friendship. That Quando and Tim had in these little moments. On May the 11th, 2022, Lil Tim does an interview with Fuchsia's TV where he spoke on the Von situation. He didn't go too in detail about the events of that night, but he did boldly claim that he did what any good friend would want them to do. Yeah, no matter where you at, like, they would have wanted their partner to be there for him. 
So while Quando and Tim were out here living life and speaking openly about their thoughts on this situation, behind the scenes, Quando's ops from different cities were making connections and plotting against him and his people. In May, S8K members seen on Instagram Live with Oblock members who were friends with King Von. It seemed like Lil Durk was still on the hunt and looking for ways to potentially get his revenge on Quando or Lil Tim for the death of King Von. And Durk wasn't even keeping this a secret. On June the 3rd, 2022, Lil Durk says that he's still trying to nail him, i.e. kill Quando, on the track Keep Dissing 2 with Boston Richie. Durk would go on to liken himself to King Von, rapping, Bro got bodies, he's a demon child, I'm brothers to a devil. After the slide for Von trend had become so popular, it seemed to be common knowledge that Lil Durk and the people around him were openly trying to have Quando Rondo killed. But despite their earlier sentiments, Quando and Tim weren't all about the negativity. In August 2022, in an effort to give back to his community, Lil Tim did a book bag drive in a Savannah church. Unfortunately, despite making small positive steps, the negativity of gang life in Savannah would prevail. A few days before a scheduled trip to Los Angeles, one of Quando's close friends Fendi is killed in a shooting on West 38th Street. After cops responded to reports of shots fired around 3 a.m. on the 800 block of West 38th Street, they would find 22-year-old Fendi, real name Phoenix Odom, dead at the scene. Right now, a man dead and police are scrambling to figure out who killed him. Here's a look at the crime scene on the west side of Savannah where you can see investigators gathering evidence for hours overnight. Now, that shooting happened early this morning on West 38th and Bullock Streets. As soon as we learn more about what led to that shooting, we will bring it to you. Unsurprisingly, Quando's enemies would mock the death of his close friend. But despite the tragedy that took place in Savannah, Quando and his team would press on with their trip to Los Angeles, where initially they'd seemingly be having a good time, as Quando and Lil Pab would post clips to social media, showing them in the back of a car, popping a bottle, and enjoying the good life. However, unfortunately, it was here in Los Angeles when tragedy would strike again. On August the 19th, 2022, just before 5.30pm, while sitting in their SUV, Quando Rondo and Lil Pab would be the targets of an assassination attempt, as three masked gunmen would approach Quando Rondo's car whilst parked at a gas station right near popular LA tourist destination, the Beverly Center, where these shooters would open fire. The police chief would later describe the shooters as having gotten out of a white car in dark clothing, shooting, and fleeing immediately after the shooting in what seemed to be a professional hit job. They gassed up their vehicle, and as they were getting into their vehicle, a, a white car approached from the alley. Uh, three men got out of that car. They were in all dark clothing. Uh, they approached, uh, fired numerous shots, and then left in that white car going eastbound in the alley north of Beverly. It does appear that uh, we don't see any kind of argument or anything go on beforehand, so clearly these men came here with a, with a mission in mind. KCAL News would give viewers a good look at the alley where the shots were fired from, and Fox 11 News Los Angeles would break down the entire series of events, explaining that the shooting took place at the gas station, which was followed by an attempt to flee by Quando's entourage, where they drove a short distance before pulling over to seek medical attention for Lil Pab, who was hit in the shooting. Once that SUV is hit by the gunfire, they take off, they hit the gas, and they drive a few blocks away into West Hollywood. They wind up stopping over at Santa Monica and San Vicente, right in the very heart of West Hollywood. You know, over there by the Sheriff's Station, also by the West Hollywood Park. They pull over there because the wounds to the man who was hit inside the Escalade too severe, he's bleeding. They pull over, 911 is called, paramedics rush in, they take the injured man who's hit by gunfire to the ER, he does not make it, does not survive. This essentially created two separate crime scenes, the scene of the shooting and the scene of where Quando's car stopped, with a KTLA-5 helicopter putting surveillance on both of these scenes soon after the incident. According to KCAL, when Quando's car stopped, a pedestrian flagged down a sheriff deputy who began to help Quando and a wounded Lil Pab in a dramatic scene that was captured on camera by bystanders. And that's where sheriff deputies were then flagged down by a pedestrian during rush hour on a Friday, right around 5.30. They found the victim with a gunshot wound and inside of a black Cadillac Escalade. Paramedics rushed him to the hospital. That is where we are told he died. His identity currently being withheld until family is notified. Quando Rondo would be filmed by passers-by, breaking down at the scene and screaming in disbelief as his wounded friend Lil Pab is pulled from the car and given CPR, with this heartbreaking scene quickly going viral and being broadcast on most major news outlets. Somebody, somebody got shot, bro. I'm press. I get it. Can I get, can I get some space, please? Hello? Hey, what was it? 
would pass away in hospital as a result of his injuries, leaving Quando Rondo devastated, not just at the scene, but with later social media posts memorializing his close friend and cousin. Lil Pab was one of Quando's right-hand men, someone who had been there for him during his come-up and stayed by his side when the whole industry turned against him. Pab had now lost his life, highly likely as a direct result of the million-dollar bounty placed on Quando's head following the killing of King Von. Ironically, with Pablo's death coming just a week before he was set to face trial for his 2019 RICO charges. But instead of Pab facing justice, Los Angeles police would now be looking to catch whoever did this brazen and professional murder. This was a brazen and professional hit, with the shooters clearly not caring about the fact that this took place in broad daylight in a busy tourist district. In fact, this scenario was eerily similar to the murder of FBG Duck by members of King Von's gang, Oblock. After all, both of these shootings would seemingly take place right in front of popular tourist destinations, in this situation, Los Angeles' Beverly Center. To give you an idea, the shots rang, rang out there and right across the street, the Beverly Center. Imagine that, 5.30 in the afternoon, incredibly no one else hit by the gunfire. However, in the aftermath of the incident, there would be a lot of conflicting narratives regarding who was responsible. Members of the LA-based gang, the Hoover Criminals, would be quick to celebrate Quando's misfortune, no doubt a result of the feud between Quando and the Hoovers many years before. Interestingly, after the incident, posts would circulate with captions saying, not Dirk's work which, if you ask me, is a little bit suspicious. After all, Quando had been warned by the Hoovers when he went to LA in 2019, and since he's a member of Savannah's Rollin 60 Crips, and that the Hoover criminals are local enemies of Los Angeles' Rollin 60s Crips, the Hoovers clearly had a grudge against Quando since he had been seen making a disrespectful hand sign towards the Hoovers a few years ago. But that was years ago, and at this point, Quando's beef with the Hoovers seemed much more about social media, unlike his beef with the Chicago rappers, which had already claimed the life of King Von. And despite these early reports that the Hoovers were responsible for the shooting, it would actually be friends and associates of King Von who were quick to celebrate the most hard following the killing of Lil Pap. Friends of Von would post pictures of him on IG following the shooting, with some going as far as to say, ain't no time frame on that get back. Even posting pictures of Quando saying it should have been him. King Von and Lil Durk's DJ, DJ Bands, would mock Quando Rondo, taking to Instagram saying that he was signing artists to Belt to Ass Records. Belt to Ass Records, you know what I'm saying? We signed man. Anybody could get signed, man. That's all you gotta do is play crazy out here. You get your ass signed, man. Oblock member and friend of King Von, D Bands, would later be on live in Oblock along with other gang members claiming to be smoking Lil Pap. Tell him who we smoking. We smoking. What's dude name? Lil Pap at the P. Dota. Meanwhile, other OTF affiliates would mock Quando Rondo and tell fans to guess who they're smoking. See me be like, no! <laughs> Y'all killing me with these nose. No! They killing me. Look at their nose. They killing me. Y'all killing me with these nose, man. No! Swipe Guess we rolling up this morning. <laughs> Uh, Even OTF affiliate Lil Vani, who had actually gone back and forth on Clubhouse with both Quando and Pab himself, would take to social media to mock Quando for losing two friends, saying that when it rains it pours, and that Quando should keep his chin up. Despite the disrespect coming from the people who wanted Quando and his friends dead, Quando's team would not be discouraged. Lil Tim would post tributes to Pab on his Instagram and his Twitter, with a flurry of posts honoring his fallen friend. In one tweet, Tim tells Pablo to say what's up to Sosa and Stucky in heaven, and expressing disbelief about this sudden loss. Lil Pab's brother would also post from his account, saying that he was a real one who stood on business, and saying that he's got Quando's back forever. Even NBA Youngboy would post twice, seemingly indicating that Get Back was on the way, and saying that he truly wants what's coming to him, but it might take some time, even describing the situation as sad and wicked. Youngboy's ominous but tasteful statement would be in stark contrast to the other side. After many of Von's friends had posted disrespectful things on social media towards Quando, one person would stand out from them all, taking the disrespect to a whole new level. A few days after the shooting, a Chicago black disciple named Famous Richard makes a skit and music video mocking Quando's reaction to the Lil Pab shooting. Sheriff's deputies pulling out a man who had been shot in an SUV. This man, a passenger in that car, frantic at the sight. The song was literally called 
no. And the hook was famous Richard just screaming no, like Quando did when he saw Lil Pap die. This song was even promoted, encouraging other people to do the impression of Quando shouting no, calling it the Quando Rondo challenge. In response to this, Quando Rondo's friend Jump Out Gang Black, the person who made the song King Tim Story, would clap back with an IG story, saying that things are much deeper than they seem and that people are false claiming this incident, even adding that he is planning to make somebody pay. Meanwhile, a few days after the incident, amid the disrespect coming from King Von's friends and affiliated Black Disciples in Chicago, Lil Tim takes to Twitter to diss Slutty, tweeting the Slutty way, a reference to King Von's friend Slutty, who had tried and failed to execute Tim the night Von died, ultimately end up being killed by the police. But once the dust settled on this incident, those involved would need to hop off the internet and begin to deal with the real-life consequences of the situation. In September, Lil Tim would be seen at Lil Pab's funeral, and while rumours had circulated that Quando wouldn't be attending the funeral, he'd later be seen carrying the casket along with Lil Tim and others. After the ceremony, Lil Tim would be popping champagne at Lil Pab's wake. <laughs> And considering just how much of Quando's great artistry has come from him channeling his pain into great songs, it's no surprise that it didn't take him long to open up about the death of his right-hand man Pab in Pain Songs. On August the 30th, 2022, Quando Rondo opens up about the situation on the song Give Me a Sign with NBA Youngboy, rapping that people were testing him and now a rapper got killed, as well as saying it broke his heart to see Lil Tim get shot and then charged with murder just for protecting him. Elsewhere on the song, NBA Youngboy raps about King Von sleeping with his ex, saying that he couldn't cope with it, and saying that him and Quando have been blackballed in the music industry for what Lil Tim did to King Von. This would give fans an insight into the pain that Quando and Youngboy had been going through, living with the consequences of King Von's death as a result of their rap beef. But what was still a mystery was who exactly was responsible for this most recent murder of Lil Pap. Soon, the internet would begin piecing together the clues, with a suspicious eye being cast towards the LA branch of the Rolling 60s Crips. Now initially, Quando seemed to have a connection with the LA wing of the same gang he represented in Savannah. He had been seen with Rollin' 60s members in LA on his previous trip when he was pressured by the Hoovers, and it seemed that Quando was familiar with that age-old process where the world of rappers and gangsters collide, known as checking in. This is the idea that rappers have to contact the local gang and negotiate protection whilst visiting a new city. This checking in process may or may not involve a payment, or it might simply operate on a mutual respect being shown. Many rappers like Lil Baby have seen showing love to LA's Rolling 60s as part of an apparent checking in process. Here's Lil Baby in Rolling 60s territory with legendary Rolling 60s Crip rapper Nipsey Hussle. A former Crip leader by the name of Big U actually broke down the process of checking in to Charlemagne in an interview on The Breakfast Club. Explain extortion to us. What, would the rappers really be getting extorted by the gang members? Because if you're coming out here, you eating, and you in the club, mm -hmm. and nobody know you, and you bring in your crew, then what happens? You fool. You fool! Interestingly, Quando had actually had numerous interactions with legendary LA Crip Big U in the lead up to this tragic incident. Big U had claimed on The Breakfast Club that Quando had reached out to him for protection and suggested that despite claiming role in 60s, Quando had never showed him love until he began having problems with Dirk after Von's death. You know, you got a lot of dudes like when I was here last time that claim my neighborhood to send this music, but they don't really f us until it's a problem. Then they call him. Like Quando Rondo, I just showed. Mm -hmm. Um, envy. Like, you can't call me now. You can't call me when the fire hot. Mm -hmm. You didn't f me before that. You know what I mean? You had my number, you could have called me, you could have did all that. This comment elicited a response from Quando, who denied ever calling Big U for protection, instead saying that he was asking how he could give back to the rolling 60s in LA. It's time for me to start scraping on my face, politics-wise. You feel me? It's time for me to leave this street in the streets and just play my role with this internet. I never once called nobody, no n on planet f Earth for no protection. Because I don't fear no man. Why would I wait to get us some shit? Anybody that I ever called, I called on some shit. Like, how can I help? How can I do this? How can I do that? I never called no, no person on planet Earth for protection. Big U would reply to this, claiming to have love for Quando, but also suggesting that he was planning to pull up on him and that he was in his town. First of all, I never talked to Quando. You know, it ain't nothing but love with Quando. And um, I was only addressing something that Qu that um that um uh, Shadow Man had said to me. And my nephew reaching out to do something for the kids, definitely do that. Because I never talked to him. He just asked me if somebody reached out. I just feel like I know Cuz and I've been knowing him. And I never heard from him after we had a conversation maybe a year, year and a half ago. No, maybe two years ago. And then, um, so when he called me, 
I'm only on positive vibes. So, I'm gonna pull up on cuz, or he can pull up on me. I'm in his town right now, so. But I ain't got number love for nephew. And he talked to my son them a week ago about whatever they was talking about. So, I'm gonna leave it at that. Big U would claim to not be doing anything with Kwando if it's about anything negative. Kwando wanna do something for the kids, for the family. I'm definitely with him on that. You know, definitely support him. But, no, nah, if it ain't positive, man, I'm not rocking with it. I'm just not rocking with nothing unless it's positive. 100, period. So I'm not even taking negative calls, man. I'm not, I'm not looking for no negative calls. I'm not taking negative calls. If I think it's gonna be negative, I'm not taking it. If it ain't positive, it ain't about doing some constructive, and helping these kids, I'm out of it. But no, I never talked to nephew. You know what I mean? I never talked to him as he called me, cause I'm on, uh, I'm on all positive. Positive vibes, but I will talk to Kwando. And months later, Big U would appear on No Jumper in an interview where he seemingly apologized to Kwando and indicated that there had been a miscommunication. Somebody got to be a man at some point and say they was wrong. Mm. Like as far as Kwando Rondo, I was wrong for saying it, but he was wrong for 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 not reaching to his homeboy. And then on the same line that I reached out to you, you reached back out to me on it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I apologized to my homeboy. You know what I'm saying? Because. That's where it starts and stops. Somebody got to apologize. They was wrong. I was wrong. And then, a couple of months later, in August 2021, Kwondo is in Los Angeles on a trip the year before the death of Lil Pap. And on this trip, he would appear in a sit-down interview with Big U himself, the ridiculously titled Checking In podcast on World Star Hip Hop, with Big U starting off the podcast welcoming Kwondo to LA. Checking in with my young fella, Kwondo. Okay. Yeah, man. Okay. What's up, young fella? Cool. Is you in California, huh? You did. You see? You know what I'm saying? Man, I'm glad to have you, man. These two would seemingly patch over their past feud and exchange mutual apologies, with Big U elaborating, saying that his nephew said that he did Kwando wrong and vouched for him. As a man, my little homie called me and he told me, Unc, you was wrong. But I'm gonna say I was wrong too, because you said I was wrong. This was an interesting interview where Kwondo would open up about a lot of things he was going through during this time. Kwondo feels that every song he puts out, people assume he's dissing certain people, but he says he has so many beefs going on that people actually get it wrong. I be saying like a lot of stuff I say like in songs and stuff, like this ain't the only person I have a problem with. Like right. I ain't talking to this person. Anything say, they gonna, gonna put it that way. Kwondo would also explain that his enemies are actively trying to stop his money by making shows so dangerous that venues keep on canceling. They trying to stop my money. You feel me fans thinking I'm high and when they don't know like I'm dying to do shows and stuff. Big U would also explain the process of checking in with Kwondo, saying exactly what a rapper should expect if they check in with the Roland 60s in LA. You might check in with me, I'm gonna tell you what clubs to go to or what clubs not to go to. They ain't dealing with the right people. If I go to Chicago, if any of my artists is going different places, I tell him, call this dude. Because he treated me right, he gonna treat y'all right. Kwondo would also claim that he could never stop being a crip. I'm real heavy, like, on, on cripping, period. I'm gonna do that to the day I die. Sometimes I ask the Lord, when I be asking the Lord for forgiveness, first thing pop up in my head is, why well, I can't stop being no crip though. <laughs> you feel me? Kondo would explain that you don't have to be a killer to be a crip and that anyone can identify as a crip. I always tell them like, cuz, you don't have to be a killer to be Thank a crip. You. you don't you. have to be no don't shooter to be no crip. You, you ain't gotta be no jack boy to be no crip. You could be a dentist and be a crip. You just a crip. That's a dentist. Kwondo and Big U seemingly left things on good terms after this interview. However, a year later, after the Los Angeles assassination attempt on Kwondo Rondo that claimed Lil Pab's life, Big U would appear on social media, seemingly taking a dig at Kwondo, saying that if he took a loss, he wouldn't leave his gang, and there would be no crying from him. Imagine all the dudes, and when suddenly when the storm came, they folded their tent, they went inside, or they shut down. No, they ain't with no real. When it get hard for me, I get quiet and I get still. Cause I need to hear all the doors is open. Then a week later, on September the 6th, 2022, Kwondo Rondo would come out on social media to say publicly that he's no longer representing the Roland 60s neighborhood Crips and that he's laying his blue bandana down. Essentially explaining that the Roland 60s neighborhood Crips in LA are linked up with his ops. Essentially inferring that someone from the LA Roland 60s is who set him up to get shot at in LA, leading to Lil Pab's death 
all on behalf of somebody trying to avenge King Von, with Quando saying, it don't take rocket science to see what's going on, and ending the message saying that he's now just going to focus on his family and his loved ones. In response to this, LA Crip Jay Stone would reply saying you can't just drop your flag and quit the gang, and that real Crips lose homies all the time, and not everyone is going to slide for you. Quando would seemingly respond to this with a follow-up post, essentially warning people not to talk about him, saying he doesn't care because he's rich, has 200k, and can knock down anyone in his way. One theory about how the Roland 60s might have set up Quando Rondo has been linked to an LA-based Roland 60s rapper by the name of Brick Baby. Brick Baby dropped a verse on YG's 2016 song, the menacingly titled track Don't Come to LA, a song all about robbing and shooting out of towners. He'd also openly claimed not to like Quando in an August 2021 No Jumper interview, calling him out for claiming Rolling 60s and trying to get Big U in the LA Crips to try and squash his beef with Lil Durk and the Black Disciples, essentially saying that Quando needs to check in every time he comes to LA. It's like Quando Rondo. You're not with him. Boy, stop. <laughs> Don't come to the 60s and want to provide now that that, that bro them on your ass. Well, that's got to be weird for you because you would dirk so much. It ain't weird for me. You know what I'm saying? You're not from rolling 60s. Oh, really? You're not from yeah, LA rolling 60s. You're not from rolling 60s. Right. You got to come talk to the streets. Mm. Big U's a little removed from a lot of it. Nah, he is the streets. So right. You got to come talk to the people who feet in the streets. You got to come clear yourself on both angles. Mm. You get what I'm saying? You gotta come holla at somebody. I feel it. Period. Uh, uh, you, you went to go holla at Big U. You went to go holla at Hollywood. Like, that ain't Hollywood. He really my big dog. That's my big bro. Mm. Whatever he say, if he say hold down, we gonna try as much. You know what I'm saying? He would even claim to have connected with King Von through Lil Durk when he was alive. And despite not being a black disciple himself, Brick Baby said that he considers Lil Durk his brother. Von was in and out of jail, so I done seen Von when I was down there in the O. All that shit when I be going to Chicago and all that shit. If my boy lose a close homie, I don't know, that's my boy. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's my boy. I'm not from BD. I'm from 60s. But you lose a, you, you my boy, like my ops, your ops at this point. Mm. He'd even been seen in the studio with Lil Durk in the months before the shooting and in an Atlanta vlog where he said that he'd been friends with Lil Durk and the Black Disciples all the way since 2015. Brick Baby was even rolling with OTF member Doody Low in January 2022, calling their alliance 6OTF. How do you know my friend B Brick Baby Shitra over here? That's game. I've been knowing bro for like four, five years, five years solid. Wow. It's like seven. Seven. Who else you tap with out, in with out here in LA? Uh, I, uh, Brick baby. That's it. I, I don't, you know. I <laughs> Just days after that shooting at the Beverly Center, Brick baby would post on social media telling Quando that he's a fake crip for not checking in with him and giving them money and guns. If you from out of town and you banging a hood from California. You're an imitation gangbanger if you do not check in. If you do not make sure your hood is funded, if you don't make sure your hood got blicks, if you don't make sure your hood got sticks and the kids is eating over there, a couple of who put you down with the play family is straight. You're an imitation because a motherfucker don't deal with the same enemies we deal with in LA. Brick Baby goes on to comment on Quando's claim of dropping his rolling 60s crip flag, saying that Quando can't leave a gang that he was never in. You can't leave a hood that you never was in. You claiming our hood. You cannot leave a hood you never was in unless you just get put off. Stop claiming it. If you don't want to deal with street politics, stop gangbanging. With all of this content floating around, it's no surprise then that rumors would spread that Brick Baby had something to do with this. Allegations which he personally denied on social media. Stop playing with a name, cuz. Stop playing with my name, point blank period. I'm sick so crit. Die every day. I don't got nothing to do with me. I'm sick so you internet, internet ass. They putting stories together. You is on the street. No, I don't got nothing to do with it. Stop calling my phone talking about, oh, hey, hey, you know, man, on 6 so man. On hood, them boys got hot. On 6 so ain't none of my niggas out on Beverly Hills in broad daylight. What's wrong with you? With this whole situation, even provoking a response from NBA Youngboy, who said, wait till I start talking. However, from here, Brick Baby would bizarrely go on to do a series of interviews speaking on the situation directly, telling Cam Capone News that Quando was smart to try and squash his beef with Big U. It was a great move for him. 
like to go check in with the big dog because that's our big dog so you trying to get him to soften up the people that's around your age and you know what I'm saying still outside he's still outside too but you get what I'm saying to soften it up for us so if you if we come around and just say I did something to him and he called big bro like Oh, but Big Bro called me like, man, I told you you school. You know what I'm saying? He went that way. But the whole thing is that's not the age group that you beefing with. You know what I'm saying? He, you beefing with Dirk, right? You, you want to get a message to Dirk, that's my boy. So the age group that you dealing with, he still, even when I get the message, he going to have to call me to get the bro. I'm the closest one to bro. You get what I'm saying? Brick Baby would also express how surprised he was when he heard that Quando, an apparent Roland 60 Crip, had killed a Chicago Black Disciple, the King Von situation, with Brick Baby thinking that he'd thought Quando had a good relationship with the Black Disciples because of his earlier connection to Lil Durk. I'm like, damn, the 60 killed the BD? Like, they don't know how close we is? Like, these are boys. Like, what the f been going on? And I'm like, I, these f he's been living in LA f with them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, these are boys. Like, what the is going on. But Brick Baby once again would outright deny being responsible, saying you must be smoking dope to believe that. With me with two strikes, what I'm gonna get out of put for kill broad day like Beverly Hills, man. You gotta be smoking good crystal. <laughs> you gotta be smoking big dope, Chris Brown style. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dead obvious. <laughs> Wrong crib. <laughs> Brick Baby would later be asked in a September the 11th, 2022 interview with Cam Capone News about these rumours that continued to spread that he was personally involved in the incident that claimed Lil Pab's life, with Brick Baby claiming to have been in Atlanta at the time of the incident. There was the, the Quanta Rondo situation at the Beverly Hills, in Beverly Hills at the gas station. I guess there was rumours yeah. about you. Yeah. I was in Atlanta, so 100%. The police know what's going on. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to let the police do their job, because I ain't do not for to put me in the middle of no murder while I'm raising my kids. Didn't do. He would go on to say that he wouldn't even comment whether or not he was involved with it. Now, if y'all caught me slipping on camera and I really popped something and y'all got it, like, it's all on the internet, it's like, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be commenting on it, though. I wouldn't be saying, hey, leave my name out of it. I'd, I'd probably go the scary way and just blank out all social media and just get up out of here somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about it. They're going to have to come find me. I'm not operating with a phone or nothing after I do some <laughs> He would also go on to say that he isn't surprised that people think he's involved due to his past history with Lil Durk, but he denied believing that Lil Durk could have possibly been involved in the hit. Were you surprised when you started hearing rumors about yourself? Hell yeah. No. No, hell no. Nah. As soon as I seen that, first I see, all right, I landed in Atlanta, boom. They say he got shot at a football game in South Georgia. He was shot too. So yeah. I'm looking, I'm like, damn, didn't catch a break. Cause I was like, didn't he just lose a homeboy like the day before that or something? I'm like, watch, watch what the internet do with this. I already knew it was coming. I just was laughing. I doubt Dirk has something to do with six, isn't it? Like, I don't see how. I don't see how. A few days later, Brick Baby even said in a September the 15th, 2022 interview that there's an old saying that you're not a Roland 60 until you kill another Roland 60. An allusion to the death of Nipsey Hussle at the hands of Eric Holder, another Roland 60. At a point, it was like everybody in the, in, the, in LA used to say, oh yeah, you ain't a real 60 till you kill a 60. But it's like our hood big. And it been in Turtle Beast for years. He would also clown Quando Rondo for attempting to change sets after the death of his friend, laughing at him for trying to tap out the gang like it's wrestling. Have you ever thought about leaving the set alone? Because recently there was a, <laughs> a young rapper who said yeah, he's done that, with man. that. <laughs> he said he's, you know, he's, he's done with that. <laughs> Attack. <laughs> but, um. Hey. Said, one, two, three. <laughs> 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 Man, never in life. Even if I was, like, we got retired gangbangers in the hood. Right. You get what I'm saying? It's the way you go about it. You go never drop your flag, though. Mm -hmm. 
Around a month after the shooting, Brick Baby would be seen on social media flexing with bundles of cash, and releasing a new song with OTF artist C3, a track called Brick Lato. A track which had C3 rapping, I heard they claim in 60, have them real hoods get at you. As well as rapping, they drop that location, we at your spot, we pulling up like peekaboo. With this release sparking yet more speculation that Brick Baby had actually been signed to Lil Durk's OTF label just a month after the shooting, with an OTF affiliate jumping on this song with him, seemingly claiming responsibility for the deed. But Brick Baby would duly deny his involvement in the incident in yet another Cam Capone interview. And then there was the rumors about you signing to OTF, is there any anything to that? It, nah, man, it ain't nothing to it. I mean, it's OTF. We got s in the works, but it ain't no locked in type situation. They just see me on, on the ground with a gang of money and just think that it's that. However, Brick Baby would continue to drop songs like the track Murder Dance with Icewear Vezo, where he raps, I just gave a hundred bands to my murder man. I prepaid for 10 bodies. And he don't need a stretcher, he need a body bag. He was dissing on the net, we finally caught his ass. Only thing I'm regretting is I ain't wear a mask. And lyrics saying, broad daylight, knock his brains out, dropped 50 on his car, knock his frame out. But Brick Baby would have people really surprised when he said outright in a No Jumper interview with Poetic Flacco that people can no longer tell Lil Durk that he needs to slide for Vaughn because of what happened to Lil Pap. Oh, they did some, oh, slide for him, slide for him. Oh, you a b mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Slide for Vaughn, right? Nobody... Yeah. They say you can't say that no more. Why? Oh yeah, cause of wait no wait no no like they who died? Say you can't say that no more. Oh, cause of FVG Cash? Oh who? Nah, cause Lil Pop. Oh, what's that? But I'm just saying they just say you can't say that no more. That's the new term, uh, like no more slide for mine. And do you feel feel like you have now have earned your way into the quote unquote OG status now? Uh, definitely. Right. Not like that, it's just like, because of the way I carry myself. He would go on to say that Quando has to lay in the bed that he made by not showing love to the rolling 60s Crips in LA. You should have been doing the right thing from off the rip. That's what they say, the bed, you, you gonna lay in the bed that you make. Mm. That's just a perfect example, like, hey, if you would have handled your connections or your people, whatever you had the right way before it jumped off. And saying that Quando was dumb for beefing with Dirk, who has 20 to 30 million dollars to his name. And just signed the deal for like 20, 30 million, Dirk, right? Yes. Who the f the beef would come for you? <laughs> this nigga got too much money, man. You get too what I'm much. saying? Like, listen, man. Don't beef for rich people. Don't beef with rich people, man, unless you're going to slide. And you don't need to say nothing out loud. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, point blank, period. Don't put that bag of thing on your head. These bold comments attracted shock on Twitter from other apparent members of the Rolling 60s Crips. And Brick Baby would later deny his comments were self-snitching, reaffirming once again that he has nothing to do with the shooting. Never said nobody did nothing. I'm the dead homies. I ain't say Dirk did nothing. I ain't say nobody did nothing. I said the internet say you can't say slide with wine no more. Well, got nothing to do with them, them games the boys was playing. Six, seven. Dead homies. And I doubt Dirk just got called just rolling around in the LA, come on, let's make it make sense. But even as recently as April 2023, Brick Baby is still releasing music like his most recent track, Not Enough, which came with lyrics where he seemingly admitted outright to lining people up and boldly proclaiming to have been paid in excess of a million dollars for setting someone up to get killed. All of these public statements paint a picture of the LA Rolling 60s being involved in this incident. But for the record, at the time of making this video, this crime is still completely unsolved and there's been no substantial evidence to tie anybody to the murder of Lil Pab. This murder, just being the latest senseless killing, is yet another dark moment in hip hop history. Just like the death of King Von, there really are no winners here. Thankfully, Quando Rondo survived this assassination attempt, but he still lost one of those people who had been closest to him throughout his entire come up. Fortunately, Quando wouldn't be deterred and he would return to music, channeling his pain into yet more meaningful hit songs. In fact, Quando Rondo would team up with both NBA Youngboy and Lil Tim to record an entire album of music speaking openly on everything that had happened over the past few years. 
If you found that clip interesting, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you want to watch the full length version of this video, check out the documentary on my main channel, Trap Law Ross. And if you want the uncut version of that documentary, then head on over to patreon.com slash traplawross, where you can watch all of my best videos completely uncut for just two bucks. And if you want to keep in touch and get updates on the next documentaries that I'm going to be dropping, make sure you follow me on Instagram at traplawross. Appreciate it. Peace.